of this verse for we are walking by faith not by sight yes it seems like everything is crashing and falling down around us it did for Peter when he stepped out of the boat and began to walk on water here for that moment he was focused on Jesus and was able to step on water like it was solid ground because he was walking by faith not by sight but then he began to look around him and as the storm was coming down and the waves crashing around he lost all of his faith in a moment and began to fall and call out for help. That is the epitome of what we are going through. This is our moment to walk by faith knowing that God already has everything handled. I've read the back of the book. I know how this story ends. I'm not worried about tomorrow because I know who holds tomorrow. So we as a congregation, and I, I know we've gone over this a lot, but I, I just want you to feel inspired that we as a congregation need, and I think we can, move forward in the hope and the light of God that he's got this thing under control. And we don't have to worry about a thing. Yeah, it's going to be hard. He never said it would be easy. Yeah, yeah at times we're going we're gonna to be sad and we're going to be mad and we don't know why we're going through things. But as long as we understand that God's got this and I have faith that he's going to bring me through, ain't a thing that can stop. Aren't you thankful for the Lord? Uh, Pastor, would you uh, pray to open up prayer for us? with us and sing with us as we go to the Lord and worship. In the secret place of the most high, it's where I abide, it's where I abide. More and more I long to be by your side.
Falling in love 
protected. There's no place I'd rather, rather be. Falling in love with Jesus. Falling in love with Jesus. Falling in love with Jesus is the best thing I've ever, ever done. Serve it, still you give yourself away. 
to know that His love is truly never-ending. Praise God that it never ceases. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I'm thankful to know, amen, tonight that, that nothing, amen, can stand in His way, praise God, for me. That, it's, that, that nothing can stand in His way for me, and I'm thankful for that tonight, amen. Praise God that He gave His only begotten Son all to die on an old rugged cross for me. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. He's worthy tonight, church. He's so faithful. Amen. Praise God. He's so faithful tonight. Praise the Lord. If you're glad to be in the house of the Lord tonight, amen, give God a hand clap of praise. Amen. Give Him worship tonight. We glorify Your name, Father. We worship You. We give You glory, Father. We thank You, Jesus. We thank You, Jesus. We thank You, Jesus. Oh, we worship You tonight. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Oh, he's so worthy to be praised tonight, church. He's so worthy to be praised. Thank you, Jesus. Tonight, amen, I want us to, we're going to finish out our, our 21-day fast tonight, amen, with uh, these last four days of Scripture. Uh, if you've got your Bibles, amen, uh, and would stand for the reading of God's Word, we're going to, we're going to look at the first two verses Amen. I'll read those first two verses, Matthew chapter 5 and 9 and Romans 12 and 18. Those will be our opening two verses tonight, talking about, amen, the peace of God. And truly, amen, even as, as, as Brother Nick had, had opened up the scriptures tonight, amen, uh, talking about walking by faith and not by sight and talking about the, the state of our nation, praise God, and where we are as, as people. Truly, amen, we need to know, amen, that peace is there to be had. Amen. Praise God, it's there. And so Matthew chapter 5 verse 9 says this, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Uh, Romans 12 and 18 says, If it be possible, as much as life in you, live peaceably with all men. Let's go to the Lord together tonight in prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, we want to thank you for this evening. We thank you for this time, this great, great opportunity that you've given us to be in the house of God tonight. I thank you for the hope and the promise that you have given us, Lord. I thank you, Lord God, that we know that tonight that we, we can have that peace because that peace is found in you, Father. And Lord, we're so thankful, Father, that we can come together in the house of God, one with another, Father. Lord, and just worship you and just praise you and celebrate you, Father. God, we give you glory, Lord. And Lord, we just ask you to have your will and your way to be accomplished in this house tonight. Lord, we give you glory, we give you praise, and we give you honor for all of these things. For it's these things we ask tonight in Jesus' holy, sweet, and precious name. And the church says, Amen and Amen. We, we know that these two scriptures, we've, we've read these scriptures before, we've quoted these scriptures before, Amen. And I am thankful, praise God. Uh, for just these scriptures. Let me find my page where I'm at tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. One thing that I want to make sure that we point out in this piece of scripture tonight, in Matthew 5 and 9, and also in Romans 12 and 18, is the peace of God. Amen. We know that, that Jesus, praise God, is peace. Amen. He is peace. We can have peace, but the only way that we're going to have peace is through Jesus. Amen. There is no other way to have peace. Jesus was paving the way through his ministry for our deep and sustaining calling as Christ followers. Billy Graham said it this way, To be a peacemaker, you must know the peace giver. Amen. To be a peacemaker, you must know the peace giver. Uh, if, you know the, if you know the peace giver, then as, as he said, amen, he said, I give you peace. He says, not as the world gives you peace, but I give you peace. And it's through that relationship with Jesus Christ that we can have that peace. Jesus came as our peace, not to give us peace, but to truly be our peace. He came to restore us to wholeness, giving us a peace that sustains us each day when we lean into him. And do you think that now is a great time to exercise that? Do you think now is a great time, amen, to, to exercise that peace of God, amen, and show that peace of God to other people? 
when everybody else is running around like a chicken with their head cut off, amen, we're sitting back here just chillaxing. When everything's falling apart, amen, the, the, the men and women of God, amen, we should, we should not be falling apart, so to speak. Why? Because we have peace. Peace that, that, that everything's going to be okay. Yes, it will be. Amen. Why? Because I trust in Jesus. I trust in Jesus that, that He's going to take care of me no matter what happens to the state of this nation, to the state of this world. Amen. That I know, amen, that, that, that this is not my home, praise God. Yes, do I get anxious? Do I get a little bit worried and concerned? Absolutely, praise God. Uh, but however, deep resonating with inside of me, there is a peace that comes over me and says, it's okay. I've got this. Just keep trusting in me, and I'm going to lead you, I'm going to guide you, and I'm going to direct you into all truth. Amen? We can have that peace. We have the opportunity to be peacemakers as the followers of Jesus. What does that mean? It's a question that I want to pose to you. We have the opportunity to be peacemakers as followers of Jesus. What does that mean? I don't got to be nowhere till 6 o'clock in the morning, so I'm good. Stir in the pot. That's a good way. Amen. We don't stir the pot. Amen. But instead of stirring the pot, what do we do? <laughs> Mind our own business. I love it. Praise God. I love it. Thank you, Jesus. Now, so, so, so what does it mean, amen, if we want to be peacemakers and we have an opportunity in the world right now, there's such division, such disunity, all this is going on between, between parties, between the world and the church and all these things, how would we be a peacemaker in this particular point in time? A soft word turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. We can step into the midst, amen, of this and say, you know what, it's okay. We can agree to disagree, and it's going to be okay, amen. But let me tell you about a man named Jesus, amen. This is where we're at. This is the opportunity that we have, and not only that, but what about how we live our lives? Absolutely. Peace is not merely a gift to be received. Amen? Peace is not just a gift to be received. Praise God. But, but, but what? In order to be true peacemakers, we must educate them. Amen? active in that in what in working together that's one of the greatest things i have and i am thankful that god has made me this way because absolutely in because i could work with brother george and brother george and i have one day and and he's going through his notions and he does what he does but this morning the common sense i woke up with the common sense this morning that if he's going to show me a job amen or if he's going to show me something that that common sense and teaching that i've gotten amen that i'm going to now i'm going to subject myself unto him he has the potential to do. As the says, because he might be able to teach me something that I do not know. And then as I'm learning from him, as I get to know him and his 
he is and what he does and how he responds, then there might come a day and I say, you know what, Brother George? I understand this is the way you do this, but, but have you ever thought about doing it? If you, if you did it, you know, I've been looking at it in five minutes. Amen. That's, that's not being a, a, a con conflicting, so to speak, but that's conflict resolution because now I'm not saying, well, he's an idiot. You're an idiot, George. You don't know what you're doing. Why are you doing it this way? What does that do? Learn, praise God. Any other thoughts on that before I turn the page? Awesome. Day 22, or day 21, day 19, I'm sorry, of 21 in this day's reading. Galatians chapter 6 and verse 9. I like these next four verses. I really, really like these next four verses. Galatians chapter 6, verse 9. And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap. His Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will enter thou into the joy of the Lord. The next scripture, seven. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Last scripture, Hebrews 10 and 25. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another and so much the more as you see the day approaching. Out of those four verses, the last one kind of begins to take a step in a different direction. But those first three verses that I read in Galatians 6 and 9, Matthew 25 and 21, 2 Timothy 4 and 7, what would be the common thread that held those verses together? Say it again, Brother Greg. Faith. Faith. If we follow these scriptures, it will be well with our soul. What do you mean by that? Well, if you look at it, if we look at it, number one, you're not going to grow weary. How do I not get weary? Well, if you look at, go back to that first verse, Galatians 6 and 9, let us not be weary in doing well. So you can grow weary in doing well. Amen. You can grow weary in doing good things. This, is, this happens, amen. However, he says, but don't allow yourself to grow weary in doing well. Stay in tune, stay focused, because in due season, you will reap the reward, you will reap the harvest, if you what? If you continue doing those things. He says, don't stop. Amen? Come in. Get your charge. Get your, get your worship on on Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday night. Come. Get plugged in, praise God, because our batteries get weak, so to speak, through the, through the work week. Amen? And we need the Sunday morning service. We need the Sunday night service. We need the Wednesday evening service. I don't know about anybody else, but I do, so that I can come back in and be with God's people and be refreshed to go back out into the work week and to continue on. Amen? The second part of that one is stay faithful, stay faithful, amen, stay faithful and you're going to make it. His Lord said unto him, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. He says, now I'm going to make you ruler over many. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. Stay faithful and you will be rewarded. Amen. Do you believe that? Do we honestly believe that scripture? He says, stay faithful, and you will be rewarded. The last one in Hebrews chapter 10 and 25, he says, I have, what, whoa, what happened? Yeah, I fought a good fight, I finished my course, and I have kept the faith. That one in Matthew 25, 21 ties together for staying faithful, and you will be rewarded. Why? Because I have kept the faith. How important is it to keep your faith? I mean, what else is there? What else is there? Amen. There is nothing else. We must, amen, keep the faith. 1 For he is a rewarder that them that diligently seek him. Amen. 
So let me ask you this question. Let's just stomp right here. Let's, let's take a time out. So what does that look like? What, is, what are those life experiences when I say keep the faith? If you keep the faith, what exactly, what, what, what comes to your mind when we talk about this? we keep the faith? we got to stay in the Word, right? you got to stay in the Word. you got to get in the good book, amen? You've got to get in there. You've got to read it. And not only to read it, but as it said, as we talked about in the, in the last passage, not only as he, is, is it there for us to read, but it's also there for us to do what with? Once we read it, we have to do something with it. We have to apply it because what did James say? James says that faith without works is dead. So we could read that book until, amen, we got it memorized from cover to cover. And it not do us any good until we begin to apply it, amen, to our lives and begin to actually walk it out. And I think that that's where a lot of people fail at. They read it, we, we've got a great head knowledge of it, we can quote the word, amen. We can, I mean, we've got it figured out. But when it comes to loving people, that's George's job. When it comes to helping the needy, that's Sister Kim's job. When it comes, amen, to whatever, that's somebody else's job. Amen, it's never our job to do it. But that's not, that's not biblical truth, amen. It's up to us. We are the hands and feet of Jesus. We have to walk it out. Praise God. In that last one, in Hebrews chapter 10 and 25, not forsaking, this is one, as, as a preacher and as a pastor, this is one of my favorite verses. Uh, why? Because where do I want to see people? I want to see people here. Amen. And this is, this is so good. He says, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. As the man, and I see this, I see this as the, the Bible talks, especially in the Old Testament and, and, and a little bit in the New Testament, about a watchman. And that watchman is to, to watch over the city. They, they, in the, especially in the Old Testament, they had appointed places that they would sit on the walls of the city. And they had those watchmen that would watch out over the land. And they would warn, amen, the, the citizens and, and the army, praise God, that they were with of impending doom and, and dangers that was going to be coming. He says, this is what I see this is. This is a, 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 an exhortation because he says, but exhorting, it is an exhortation. It is, it is a warning call. He says, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another. And so much the more as you see the day approaching. So we see the day that Jesus is coming soon. We see that day is approaching. And he says, so you need to be telling people more and more and more and more and more that we got to be coming together. Because when we come together, amen, yes, I know there is strength in numbers. Amen? There is strength in numbers. And praise God, and when we get together, amen, there is nothing impossible. There's nothing impossible for the people of God when we stand united. Amen? I believe that, praise God. I believe it with all of my heart. So stay in church, and that last one is stay in church and build each other up. That, that's what I get out of that. Stay in church and build each other up. Just go to church for you? Is that what? No, absolutely not. We go to church for me, but I also go to church for other people. Because I come here, and that we can get together, and we can pray, and we can seek God together... And that if you have a need, then who's here? Somebody else is here that we can go to and we can say, I need somebody. I need somebody that can reach the throne of God for me because I've got an urgent prayer that we got to get through. And the Word says, 
that if I can find somebody to agree with me on, that it's going to be accomplished. This is what we do. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18. Praying always with all prayer and supplication. Before I, before I read that, I, I want to, I've got this highlighted that I wanted to come across. In this last piece, here is the hard truth that God didn't create, create us for fame and recognition. I'm going to say that again. God did not create us for fame or recognition. Now I want you to think about this. Think about Jesus, who was God in the flesh. When crowds flocked to him, what did he often do? He withdrew into the hills, into obscurity, whether with his disciples or to spend time alone with the Father. Why? We could go a few different directions here, but I think it's because he knew that the only opinion or affirmation that was worthy was that of his Father. That's what he depended on. What if we lived in such a way? What if no matter if people saw the good we were doing or not, we kept on doing it anyway because we knew that it pleased the Lord? Not looking for a pedestal, not looking for fame and recognition and say, look what I did. Look what all these things that, 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 that we did or whatever. But we, the main thing is, is we want to show that if the Lord did not build the house, it's not going to get built. Amen? That it's about Him and Him alone. It's people that continue doing the small things without recognition that keep the world going. Let that one sink in for just a minute. There's truth in that. Amen? Let's, let's go on now. So now Ephesians 6 and 18. Praying always. How often should we pray? Well, the word says always, right? I mean, that's the simple answer. With all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and there's that word again, watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for who? For all saints. The next one says in Ephesians 6 and 12, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. And then John 10 and 10 says, The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. Jesus finishes this sentence and he says, But I am come that they might have life and that they might have it. How much? More abundantly. This is important. So what, what, what would you tell us on these three particular scriptures? Well, this is what I would say to the church. Pray and watch. Pray and watch for who? For us and for who? If I'm praying and watching out for Sister Kim, then what is she doing? She's praying and watching out for who? For me. So that means she's got my back. She's got my six, so to speak. She's, she's watching me on the backside as I am covering her in prayer and watching out for her backside. And then Brother George is doing the same thing for him and his family. Amen. And also for who? Not only for him and his family, but he's also praying for who? Since he is a youth leader and our youth pastor, he's, he's praying for who? He's praying for the youth. Now he's praying with all prayers for all supplications and all these things, and he's watching out for the youth. So he's got their six. He's got their back. Amen. And then, and then Nick is, and then this one and that one and everybody. So then we're praying for all people in the church, and we're praying and covering one another in prayer, and we're watching out for one another. Amen. You know what that's called? Family. That's what that's called. That's why it's called a church family. Amen? It's a church family, praise God. We don't want to see nobody left behind. Amen? That's why Jesus said, I leave the 99 and I go where? I go get that one that has went astray. This is important. Pray and watch for you and your fellow brethren and sisters. Number two, know who your enemy is. I'm going to say that again. Know who your enemy is and it will change the way you deal with other people. Amen? I'm going to say it again. 
If we know who our enemy is, it will change the way you deal with other people. Why? Because Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12 tells me that I do not wrestle with my fellow people. I don't wrestle with them. It is not against them, but it is against the wickedness of this world. That's who it's against. And the sooner that we realize that, it will change the way that we deal and handle and communicate with other people. What is the next point that you've got out of this? Know that your enemy is not your friend. Huh? He is not your friend. I promise you, he is not going to knock on your door, amen, and sell you Avon. Amen? He's not going to do it, praise God. He's going to knock on your door, amen, and I don't even know if he's going to knock on your door. They somehow says, amen, that he don't knock. He just kicks it in. And he says, I'm here to take over. And then, and then amen, we sometimes, and I'm not saying this is for everybody, but, but sometimes we say, well, since you're here, just come on in and sit down. No sense having a, getting all bent out of frame about it. What are you so upset for? Just come on in here and have a seat and we'll talk about it. No, we won't. Amen. I'm going to rebuke you in the name of Jesus, and you're going to go out quicker than what you came in. That's how we're going to handle that situation. But to know, amen, that, that we have to know our enemy, that he is not our friend. How do you know? Because the Bible says in John 10 and 10, the thief comes. He is a thief. And he comes and he has these things. Throw up John 10 and 10 if you don't care, Brother Allen. What does he come to do? Three reasons. To steal, to kill, and destroy. Does any of those good? I mean, is any three of those options, amen, is any three of those good? None of those are good. But Jesus, this is, this is what I like about this piece of Scripture. Jesus is speaking here, and these are red letters in your Bible. And this is Jesus. He says, he's coming. He's coming to steal, kill, and destroy. He says, but I... I have come, I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Know that your enemy is not your friend and know that Jesus has given you everything so that you may live. He has given us everything to succeed. Do we understand that? That he has truly given us everything that we need to succeed. Do we... Do we take him at his word? Do we really, 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 really take him at his word? If he tells us this, if he tells us that the thief, this is his reason, this is his reason, then if we know, if we know that the enemy is coming, what the, the word tells me, the word tells me, he says, if you know what hour the thief would come, he said, you would sit up and you would do what? You'd, walk, you'd sit up and wait, and you would not suffer your house to be broken into. That, that's what the Word says. So how do I do that? If, because we don't know the hour that He comes. So Jesus continued to tell us, and in, the, and in this Word, He continues to tell us, that's why He said, that's why Paul said to pray without ceasing. To be spiritually what? ready to be spiritually awake. That's why he told the church, he said, Awake ye that sleep. Awake out of slumber. Rise. He says, Pay attention and know the time is near. And the enemy is upon you. He is here now. And he says, Wake up. This is important. It's important. And to know, praise God, that I have that authority and power. To know that I can trust in Jesus. Because he told me, he says, I'm going to give you life. And that you're going to have that life more abundantly, praise God. Here is the truth for each of us today. We are at war. Amen? We are at war. Are you aware of that? That's the question that we want to ask. Every single day of our lives, we're engaged in a spiritual war where Satan is trying to lure our focus to lure our focus away from Christ by any means possible. How can he lure you away? 
Huh? The worldly desires, the temptations, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. By using those three tactics, amen, he will do what he can each and every day to lure you away from the Word of God. And his mission is to steal, kill, and destroy. We have an enemy who wants to destroy our joy, our peace, and to kill our effectiveness for Christ. Why do you think he wants to destroy you? I just read it. What? He's our enemy, and he wants to destroy us. Does he just want to destroy us because we look pretty? Because we, because we go to church? Is that why he wants to destroy us? No. No. He wants, to de- he wants to steal, kill, and destroy you because that will stop the effectiveness of the Word of God. Amen? Because we are proclaiming Jesus Christ and we're telling other people about Him. We're getting people saved. People are getting healed. People are getting set free and delivered. All these things are going... This is what you're accomplishing in your life. You're praying. You're, you're breaking down strongholds. Amen? You're kicking in Satan's front door. Amen? You're storming the gates of hell with the kingdom of God. And he says, I've got to put a stop to this. It's okay. He don't bother those people that come to church and that do nothing. He don't care if you pick your word up and read it. Amen? He doesn't care for that. But what he cares about is when you pick the word up and you read it and you start to believe it and you start to act on it. Then there's a problem. Amen? When we become effective for Jesus, praise God, by the Word of God and living our lives, amen, that's what the enemy doesn't want. And therefore, amen, we put the target on, praise God, and I'll just be honest with you, we need to wear it with, we need to wear it with boldness. Amen, we're marked. That's what the Word tells us. We are marked, amen. And that's going to be okay. Why is it going to be okay? Because if God be for me, who can be against me? Amen. I mean, seriously. This is what we've got to understand. He's going to, destroy, he's going to try to destroy our joy and our peace and to kill our effectiveness for Christ. But that isn't the whole story. We know that whoever finds God finds what? Life. And that life more abundantly. In 1 John chapter 3, in our last, in our last readings, in 1 John chapter 3 and verse 18, and I'm thankful to know that through this 21 days of, of reading and looking at these scriptures and, and getting into them just a little bit more, and I pray that you really have, they finish out in day 21 on today of saying this, 1 John 3 and 18, My little children, let us love, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. What does that mean? What does that mean? What? Don't just use words, but use action. That's why he said, My little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue. But what? But in deed and in truth. That goes back to what James says. Faith without works is dead. Love without works is dead. I can tell somebody that I love them all day long. There's going to come a point in time when they're going to say, Do you really love me? You say you do, but what? But you've not shown it. Amen? You've not shown it. And it's important that we as the children of God, and what greater time right now that God has given us as the children of God to do what? To show love. To show His love. What a greater time right now that He's given us. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 1. This is the starting of the love chapter. Paul speaking to the Corinthian church. He says, though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not love, I am become as a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. 1 Peter 3 and 15. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts 
and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. We talked about that hope this morning. Love is the very essence of who we are. Let that sink in for just a minute. Love is the very essence of who we are. We must love other people by how we live. It is not an option to stay away from this. And some people, some people say this. Some people say, well, that's just not me. That's just not me. Well, I'm telling you, again, as I mentioned this morning, that is a lie out of the pits of hell. If I am in Christ and He is my Savior, the love of God that was in Him is now in me. Amen. And if I have a problem loving Brother George, it is not the Spirit of God that has a problem with loving him. It is the what? It is the flesh. Well, that's just not me. I just don't love Brother George. He don't have enough hair for me to love him. Huh? I mean, whatever that it is, we come up with some stupid excuses to, to, to say the reason that I don't love people. And the reason I say that, because they are, in fact, stupid excuses. And I know stupid is, stupid is a mean word. Stupid is it's not a nice word to say. But this is, exactly, but this is what I'm talking about. Amen? That, that we have no reason not to love people. Because why? Because God loved me first. And then he told me that God is love. And if I profess Christianity, if I profess him as my Savior, then there is no excuse of me not being able to love anybody because he loved me. And I promise you, it probably wasn't too easy for him to love this old boy. But guess what? He did. Amen? And that's what makes it great, praise God, because now I have that ability, amen, to love other people. Even when they're mean to you? Yes. Even when they hurt your feelings? Yes. Even when they don't love you back? Yes. How is it possible? How do you do that? Through the love of God. Did it come overnight? No. Did you have to pray about it and fast and seek God? Yes. How, why, what happened then? My, cru my flesh got crucified. And I came out, praise God, of the tomb, amen, walking in the newness of life. And I left the old man behind. Love is the very essence of who we are. We must love other people by how we live. It is not an option to stay away from this. If we embrace and just begin to walk in it, he will help us and show us that it's possible. But that's where people want to draw the line. People want to pull the time out right there. They, 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 they want to throw the flag, amen, and they say, nope. I love the Lord and I believe His Word, but right here we're going to stop. Can't go any further right here. But if you would just pray about it and say, God, help me to love other people like this. Help me to love other people who are not like me, who don't think like me, who don't act like me, who don't look like me, who don't smell like me, who don't talk like me, all these other things. Help me to love these people. And then God's going to give you an opportunity to love those people. Then this is where you put feet on your faith and when you step out to make that first step to love that person, guess what? Guess what the Holy Spirit's going to do now? He's going to show you that you can do it. He's going to make it possible for you to do it. Amen? I believe that with all of my heart. This last one, I'm closing. This last one is, is, is I love this. In 1 Peter chapter 3 and verse 15, it says, But sanctify the Lord God in your heart. That word sanctify means to set apart as or declare holy or to consecrate. Now this is important. This is important. When he says, I need you to set God in your hearts as holy. I, I need you to to push everything else out. And he says, you have got to sanctify the Lord God in your hearts. He has got to be holy in here. 
to set apart as or declare holy. I'm here to tell you that if, if we will just focus just for a little bit on that first part and say, you know what, Lord, I, I have given you the throne of my heart. I have set you up as the one, the King of kings and the Lord of lords upon the throne of my heart. And now, if I do that and be ready always to give an answer, because he didn't start off and be ready always without saying, but sanctify the Lord God in your heart. There's a reason that he said you need to do that first. Because if he has not been sanctified in your heart, amen, as the Lord God, then the rest of this verse is not going to happen. It won't happen. He says that you're going to be ready always to give an answer to every man that asks you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. If we have not sanctified him in our, in our hearts as holy and as God, then that hope is not going to be in you. You're not going to be able to tell your neighbor and your friend that everything's going to be okay. You're not going to be able to do it. When they show up at that particular point in time and, and, and begin to, to ravage your home and to take your kids and to do all these other things or your neighbors or whatever happens, amen, you, if he is not sanctified as the Lord God of hosts, amen, of heaven and earth in your heart, you're not going to be able to tell your neighbor, praise God, it's okay, just trust God. You're not going to be able to. Why? Because that hope is not in you. Even though you said it was, it's not there. Amen? This is what we got to see, and this is where, amen, this is where there's such a separation. This is where there's a separation. We must, as individuals, set God as that holy thing in our heart. And then when we set God as that holy thing in our heart, we will be ready to give an answer. That hope will flow from us easily. Brother Greg won't have to ask me but once. It won't take, amen, him kicking and screaming and beating on me for me to be able to tell him what the hope of my calling is. Does that make sense? It will come out easily. Why? Because my hope is God. My hope is in him, and I have set him upon the throne of my heart and said that if he's here and, and nothing is going to remove that from me, no matter what happens in this walk of life, God, I, I'm not going to deny you. I'm going to be with you all the way, even into the end. And how do you know that you can make it that far? Do you believe? Now, I'm just, going to, I'm just going to pose this question to us in closing tonight. How will we, how will you, this is a personal question. How will you face adversity? How will you face the troubles? How will you face the hard times? Will Jesus, will we say the same thing that Peter told Jesus? Peter said, you're, you're going you're gonna to deny me. And he says, nope, not today, Lord. He said, yes, today, as a matter of fact, before the rooster crows, you're going to deny me three times. I'll never deny you, Lord. He said, Peter, listen to me. You don't understand what I'm telling you. I know you're zealous. I know that, I know you want us, I know, I know your heart. But fear is going to grip you. And you're going to be afraid. And how did Jesus go on with this? Did he, did he rebuke him and, and say, you're never going to make it? He says, he said, Peter, he says, but know this. When the fear grips you and you look away, when the fear grips you and, and you deny me the first time, and you deny me the second time, and you deny me the third time, it's going to be okay because I'm praying for you. I'm praying that, that your faith that you say that you have in me, that it will not 
fail you. Just hang on. Because hope is coming. Just hang on because you're going to see the difference in what three days makes. You see, he denied him three times. He denied him three times, praise God. And then three days later, three days later, hope was restored. Why was hope restored? And this is what I love about Jesus because, and, and this is what I want to tell us tonight, amen, that, that, that no matter what that we might think and we think that we're going to, to do this or do, we're going to do that, I hope and pray that I'm not going to deny him. I hope and pray that, 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 that I have set him as the, the king of kings and the Lord of lords in my very heart. And this is what I'm praying for. But this is the love of God that I want to share with us tonight. That if we do fail Him, if we do come short in walking in the grace of God, know this, that when Jesus come out of the tomb on that glorious morning, as He waited, as, the, as, as, as Mary ran down to the tomb, as the others came, and as they saw the tomb was empty that morning, in one particular gospel, he said, I think it's in the Gospel of John, I'm not 100% sure. But Jesus was the gardener. And Mary Magdalene asked him, he said, Where have you taken him? Where have you laid him? And the Bible says, and Mary, supposing that he was the gardener, asked him this question. And it wasn't until, until Jesus spoke her name and said, Mary. And she said, Teacher. She said, Master. He said, go back and tell my disciples and Peter of the good news. Through it all, he knows your name. He knows where you are. He knows what you're going through. And I, I can promise you, as the word says in John chapter 17, Jesus says, I have never lost one. I feel that from the crown of my head to the soles of my feet. He says, I have never lost one, Father, that you have given to me. And he never will. Praise God. He never will. Set him tonight as the King of kings and the Lord of lords upon the throne of our heart. Look to him as the author and the finisher of our faith. Cleave to the old rugged cross. Cling to him tonight like we've never clinged before. Pray like we've never prayed before. Love as we end up in this last piece right here in day 21. Love like we have never loved before. And let God be God in our lives. That's my heart's prayer. Stand with me tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we worship you. Lord, we worship you. Oh, we worship you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. If you're here tonight, and I always want to, to close service in a time of prayer. If you're here tonight and you say, you know what, I, I need God's grace. I, I need that peace. I need that love. I, I need to walk in it more. I've got to live in it more. I have failed Him. I've come short. Whatever the situation is. Well, guess what? There's always room in the altar. There's always room at the cross, amen, for us. Always has been and there always will be. And if you're here tonight and you say, you know what, I want to pray and come pray. You say, I, want, I, I don't necessarily need anything, but I want to pray for lost family, lost friends, our nation, our country. I want to pray. Then this is the greatest time in the world to do that. I, d I just want to invite you, amen, for a time of prayer I'm going to take a few moments and I'm, I'm going to myself and if anybody that will come and join me in this altar for a short time of prayer tonight and just seeking God's face for our nation for each other to be watchmen to watch a man for others praise God to to pray and to love the way that he wants us to love and to walk the way that he wants us to walk tonight.
If you will, join me, amen, tonight in a time of prayer. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. He is jealous for me. Love's like a hurricane. I am a tree.
people believe that he can make a way where there is no way. Praise God, he can make a way where there is no way. I encourage you, amen, to stay in your word. I encourage you to, to continue to fast and to pray and to seek God's face. I encourage you, amen, to, to worship him. To find that time, if it's just five minutes, if it's just ten minutes, just to dig into God's word. Spend some time and meditating on the word and just, just being in God's presence and worshiping him. He's worthy of it all, church. He's worthy of it all. Look for those that you can bless. Look for those that you can spread the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ to and tell them of the greatness of God. They're there. Don't forget to pray one for another. Cover one another in prayer. Pray for those that you know that are not here. Pray for those that are sick. Pray for those that are shut in. Pray for those who have lost loved ones. Amen. Make sure and be praying for these people, lifting them up. Amen. Pray for Sister Jewel. I'm going to go by and visit her tomorrow. Derek called me this evening and asked me to come by and visit her. So I'm going to stop by there tomorrow evening after work. Just pray for wisdom, knowledge, and guidance uh, that God would speak to me and through me. And just pray for others, amen. People need Jesus, amen. People need Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Stand with me tonight, amen. We'll be dismissed in a word of prayer. Come back, amen, Wednesday night, ready, ready to seek God's face, ready to worship, and ready to hear, amen, the word of God. Amen. Praise God. Brother George, would you care to dismiss us tonight, please, sir, in a word of prayer?